This video is sponsored by Insta Insta360. One thing that content creators, both big and small, don't get the credit that they deserve for is the fact that they are one person production crews. It's lonely and it's difficult. And that can make certain shots really hard unless you have a camera with a built-in cameraman. Now, I used two different cameras for the intro to this video with all the moving shots, and those two cameras grabbed those moving shots with two completely different techniques. First is the Insta360 X3. The way the X3 works is it grabs a spherical 360 degree shot of the entire world around it, and then later, I get to go through on my phone and I get to choose which sections of that footage I want to put into the final video. It gets the coolest shots. You have so much flexibility later on. However, if you want a great high quality 4K shot in real time, something that you might want for a live stream or a Zoom call, this is where the second camera comes in. This one that we're using right here. If you didn't know, by the way, this is a webcam. Everything so far in this video has been shot on a 4K webcam called the Insta360 Link. And this one works a little bit more traditionally. It shoots in one direction, it shoots a 4K 16 by 9 shot, but the camera itself is perfectly balanced on three rotating motors. And my goal of this video is to show you the capabilities of this camera with both the quality and the features that make this camera completely unique so you can decide if this is something you want in your arsenal. Let's get into it. Hey, so I've got a Christmas challenge for you. It is a try not to cry challenge. We just released a brand new Christmas album on Stream Beats, a new Stream Beats Originals album. And on there, Ryan wrote and recorded a song that actually makes me cry. So there actually, it sounds like this. Jingles in the head, the world was made to turn, a year for us to learn, it's easy to no, I lost. This isn't fake, by the way. I was just thinking of footage of my one year old now that we're going to be looking at in years. And anyway, so take a listen to the new Christmas album. It's fantastic. It's got three songs. Tuanto is on there. DMCA free. Use it in your content. Use it on your live streams. And just happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the album. Okay. So gear. Um, I review a lot of gear, a lot of tech on this channel. And if I can be totally honest, nine times out of ten, it is an incremental increase. So it's the same tech we've all seen, but a little bit better, a little bit faster, a little bit clearer, whatever I'm reviewing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Incremental growth, it makes the world go round. But sometimes, sometimes there's a brand new device that does a brand new thing and allows you to make a brand new kind of content that you couldn't make before. And that gets me really excited. And that is uh, that's what we're looking at today. Like I could talk all about image quality and I don't have to cause you're looking at it right now and it's, it's phenomenal by the way. Like look at the crispness of this image. You can see my pores, the dynamic, I'm looking at, that's why I'm looking down by the way. This is, this is where the camera's showing. It's in 4K, you can see the detail on my face. The dynamic range is fantastic. I got this massive light coming on this side and I've got shadows coming on this side and you can see everything. I'm actually going to turn this one off. Hold on. It just turning off that light makes it a little bit moodier, but look at this. Got detail on the highs and on the lows. But that's all I want to say about quality. I'm going to shoot this whole video on this camera just so you can see what we're looking at here. But I want to talk about what the camera does because that's the most exciting to me. Because if a new weird idea is actually useful, that's what makes it not a gimmick. And so I don't want to just talk about the new things, the cool motors and gimbal, whatever that this camera does. I want to talk about how it applies. Let's go over. You having a hard time in that spot under your collar, bud? There you go. I don't remember what I was saying. Anyway, let's talk about feature number one. These are going to get progressively more interesting and progressively cooler. Okay, let's start with the basics. First of all, we have a motorized gimbal. Let's actually, I'm going to show you the software here. One sec. So here's the software here. And you can see down in the bottom left corner, we're in 4K. The way I was recording earlier was this little record button right here, which is great. But here we have the simple controls of this camera, right? If I want to go up, click up. If I want to go down, click down. If I want to zoom in, zoom in. Or if you want to be more intuitive, the way I actually shot the whole like camera, like writing on the paper this morning is you can actually just click and drag on the screen. All right. Now, now that we're also shooting the camera, you can see when I click and drag the screen, 
That's so cool. But here's the thing. That's fine, but when are you gonna do that during a live stream? Probably never, which is where these little preset positions make this actually useful. For example, what I was at before I started messing with stuff was position two. Now we're back to the perfect framing. If I wanted to make another one, let's say I wanted a shot that was zoomed in on my face. Something for memeing it up a little bit on the live stream. I can hit the plus button and it's saved. So now I can go back and forth. Here's the previous one. Here's the new one for the memes. And we're back, gotta have memes. Plus these are set as hotkeys. So Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3. If I were to hit Alt 3, we got the meme shot, Alt 2. We're back to the regular shot. And because they can be set as hotkeys, that means you can set them on a stream deck. And now I know there are other PTZ cameras, which are digital PTZ, meaning they're high resolution shots, 4K, and they can zoom in on this section. Uh-oh. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. I activated something. I'm gonna tell you all about this in a little bit. Let me go back to position two. That was actually kind of a convenient demonstration. Totally an accident, but usually for pan tilt zoom on a webcam, it's completely digital. It's just cropping in on different areas. In this case, that's not the case. The actual camera is moving around and looking in different spots. So for example, let's set this up as a live stream. Let's say I'm gaming, I'm more over here. You can see the camera's not really hitting me straight anymore. Let's move the camera, zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna add it as position four. Now we go back to our position shot. We have that set as position two. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe I have like a guitar rig over here. We wanna move the camera this way through the tripod that's shooting the B-roll. We make this one position five. So now when I'm doing just chatting, I use Alt 2 to go to my just chatting shot. When I'm gaming, I go to Alt 4. And then when I'm playing guitar over here, I go to Alt 5. And if I wanna meme it up, I've got Alt 3. Thing is, these all have hotkeys, including the movement up here. So you could use something like Atom or StreamerBot, and you could actually use Twitch point redemption so that chat can control the camera angle and control the movement of the camera. In fact, Nutty already did this, and not really a surprise chat focused on his uh, crotchular region, if that's a word. What are you guys gonna point at? You guys are trying to point at my crotch, aren't you? Don't point it at my crotch! So you know. Know your audience. Let's move to feature number two. Up at the top here, we have three different tabs and we start to see features like auto tracking. Now, for those of you who maybe stand up or are more mobile, move around a lot more on your stream or just want something interesting, this is really cool. If I hold my hand up like this, kind of wave to the camera, you can see it flash blue. And now it doesn't matter where I go. It's gonna watch me. This is actually how I got the shot of when I walked into the room this morning. I didn't have to do anything. The camera just did it itself. I set it over in the corner, set it to tracking, and then I just walked in. You can set the tracking speed. You can also set if you want it to zoom. So if you back up and you want it to maintain on your face, it's gonna stay zoomed in for you. And as you walk closer, it zooms back out. I'm gonna roll over my dog here. I can choose, do I want it to be on my face? Do I want it to be on my half body? Do I want it to be on my full body? So if I'm back here, it's getting all on me. Versus, hold on, let's do this. I haven't done this yet. Go on the head. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's turn off the tracking. Let's go back to two. And we're framed perfectly again. That was, I haven't actually, like I was testing this all, but like I haven't like gone through and done them in rapid succession like this. And I, I know this is sponsored. And so ignore these kind of things. You don't have to give any credibility to them, but I would like to give credibility to Insta360. This is a fantastic interface. They did a great job. It's very, It's they did a good job of making it, oh shoot. <laughs> Careful of that. If you don't want that to work, by the way, because I think I've activated it on accident like four times during this video, just turn that off. And now, now it doesn't care. There's also a zoom gesture that you can see in the gesture settings in the top right up there that if you hold your hand in the shape of an L and then you pull it down, it zooms out and then you push it up and it zooms in and then you're done. Or for those of you that have always wanted like a mouse camera, maybe an unboxing camera, hold, let me zoom back out real quick. There we go. There's a desk view mode, and there's actually two different settings for this. There's regular desk view mode, which works by pointing down at about a 45 degree angle. This way, if it's on like a regular tripod, it's not looking straight down into the base of the webcam. And if I click that, the camera looks down at that 45 degree angle, and then it skews the image to straighten things out. So that way, if I put 
some things down here. It looks like the camera is directly above it, even though it's, you can tell from the fronts, the slight angles here, you can actually see that it's looking at it from an angle. But if you are able to mount your webcam in a way where it can face straight down, you can also do the overhead view, which is right here where it does shoot directly straight down, which is great because then you can use the camera for two different things with the click of a button, either a straight on face cam or looking down for a desk view. Now that's feature number two. Let's get into feature number three, which is becoming more and more useful every day. A neat feature about this camera that I'm super pumped they added in, because it's got all these motors and it can move around, it can actually rotate and shoot horizontal. Now Harris, why is that important? We're talking about live streaming. Twitch doesn't do vertical stuff. Well, Twitch doesn't, but you know where else you could be streaming and reaching another audience? TikTok, or even just making TikTok content with a natively vertical camera. All I have to do is one, turn streamer mode on, and two, I go into the OBS settings and I set the resolution to a vertical resolution. I don't know why it's having me do 1088 instead of 1080. That seems to be the one that pops in there, so I'm not gonna question it. But the moment I change it to 1080 by 1920 instead of 1920 by 1080, the camera itself actually rotates. And again, I know you're thinking, well, why don't you just shoot it normal and then crop in the sides? I'm here to tell you, I want you to burn this into your brain. All right, don't forget this. Shooting horizontal and cropping is not the same as shooting vertical. That goes for webcams, that goes for cameras, it's not the same. One of the most important aspects of video quality is the size of the sensor. A larger sensor allows you to capture more light, it allows you to get more dynamic range, it allows you to get a shallow depth of field. When you shoot horizontal and then crop in on the sides, you are cutting out a good half to two thirds of the frame. You're cutting out pixel resolution, you're cutting out light that has landed on the sensor, you're cutting out field the view because you're cropping in just by turning the camera itself you retain a ton of image quality and just so you have a little bit of an example I'm gonna show this shot horizontal cropped on the left side of the screen and on the right side of the screen I'm gonna actually have the camera turned full resolution shown over there the biggest thing you'll probably notice right out of the bat is the wider field of view that you're getting from the vertical one just because we're using the entire sensor we're not cutting out any of the FOV. But for any of you maybe looking to set up a second webcam for maybe multi-streaming to TikTok, this might not be a terrible idea. I'll put a link to the Insta360 link at the top of the description down below so you can go check it out. At this point, what are your thoughts? on this camera. What are your thoughts of the features? What are your thoughts of the quality? Do you have any suggested improvements or features that you'd love to see them add? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit the like button because you're watching this far. You obviously like the video. And as always, happy streaming.